Virtual Legality is a YouTube video series with audio podcast versions presented as commentary and for education and entertainment purposes only. It does not constitute legal advice and does not create an attorney-client relationship. If you have legal questions about the topics discussed, please consult your own legal counsel. Honestly, you don't want to be taking generic legal advice from a YouTube channel or podcast in any event. On with the show. Apex Legends, why Respawn's weak apology does more harm than good. Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Legality. I'm your host, Richard Hogue, managing partner of the Hogue Law Business Law Firm of Northville, Michigan. And today we're going to once again dive into the world of messaging. In particular, the tone of communications that a company can take and can choose to take when interacting with its customers. For those of you who aren't familiar, over the past couple of days, uh, Respawn, which is now a subsidiary of Electronic Arts, engaged in a series of changes to its Apex Legends game that caused a certain amount of consternation amongst its fan base. As part of that, they wound up rolling back some of those changes and were discussing the rollback in a Reddit thread, which frankly contained a great deal of language that I'm not overly comfortable putting on this channel. So you're going to have to take it from me, but suffice it to say, as part of this rollback, a number of Redditors were commenting to the Apex developers. They were saying uh, some bad things about their motivations, about the economics model that had led to the original changes in the Apex Legends uh, business paradigm. And unfortunately, as a result of that interaction, uh, what wound up happening is that the Respawn developers that were engaged in Reddit conversations at the time uh, started responding uh, in kind and to some extent to, to a greater level than even the, the, the random Redditors that were commenting to them. They were using a number of ad hominem names. Uh, there was a lot of what we might characterize as unprofessional uh, communication. And I've pulled up a PC Gamer article that describes what's happened now, which is what we're going to talk about on this video. And it says, Respawn CEO Vince Zampella apologizes for developer comments in Apex Legends Fuhrer. Zampella said Apex developers crossed a line in a heated Reddit thread. And what I really want to talk to you about is the nature of this apology and why it doesn't make a lot of sense, that it's essentially tried to choose a middle ground uh, between two bad uh, options, really, uh, and by doing so has essentially picked and developed a third worse option than what originally existed. But this PC Gamer article has a description of what I just said about the Reddit thread. It also has a link to an article where they cover the Reddit thread in greater detail. Like I said, user discretion is advised on that. There's a lot of language there that is from, coming from both the Respawn side and the Redditor side. And again, it's all really fundamentally related to uh, whether or not this business model made sense, which is one of the things that I want to point out here, because while it does advance to a kind of icky place in terms of the names that are called, they aren't actually ad hominems, they aren't death threats, they aren't the kind of toxicity uh, that you really, really hate if you are on the internet or you're on social media for any length of time. These are uh, poorly worded, perhaps slightly aggressive complaints about the actual economics and the product that Respawn put out there. And frankly, what wound up happening from the Respawn developers is that they got upset that they were being called uh, money grubbing, that they were being called out for the business models that maybe they were advocating or maybe they weren't. Maybe this was put on them by the publisher or even just people that were above them at Respawn. And it's very common. It's very human reaction to, to get those kinds of complaints to be on Reddit and to respond very humanly. Unfortunately, it's not acceptable from a professional standpoint. And that's why you see what happened here, which is Vincent Pella's statement, which we're going to talk about. We're going to look at it line by line. It's a short statement. And like we've done on virtual legality in the past, we're going to look at the subtext and whether it makes sense, whether it makes sense to put a statement like this out here, what damage it does, what good it does, because that's really the purpose. One of the things I'd like you to take away from this video or podcast, uh, if nothing else at all, is that when you're making a communication, whether you're a developer talking to folks on Reddit, whether you're a Redditor talking to developers in that same space, or whether you're the head of the company that's apologizing for what your developers did, the one thing you have to come out with before you even make your statement is what are my goals here? What am I trying to accomplish? The secondary characteristic of that is who am I talking to? Because that's going to demand a certain different level of communication, whether you're talking to a colleague or a financier or a random person on Reddit. 
But the very first thing that you should establish if you are trying to make a communication in public at large is what is the goal? What am I trying to accomplish? In virtual legality, we're trying to help everyone understand what's happening in video games and information technology and software by having a greater understanding of the business and law and communications and all of these various professional aspects that govern all these news stories that you see. That's the goal of a video like this. That's the goal of a podcast like this. So if you're Vince Zampella and you get told, hey, your developers went kind of crazy on Reddit the other day, and you say, oh my goodness, we're going to have to make a public statement about that. What is your goal? Presumably your goal is to mollify what might be an upset fan base that saw your developers essentially take an aggressive stance against your existing fans. And once you've decided that you're going to make an apology statement, your goal should be to make that apology effective, to show contrition, to show that you are acknowledging that something that was done over the weekend was wrong and that you are taking uh, an acknowledgement of that fact and you are apologizing for it. Let's see what actually happens in this statement. So he says on Friday... We gave Apex fans an update on how we were changing the Iron Crown event. That was the monetization. That was the one that people were complaining about. And this was, as I said, in response to a Reddit thread in which they were actually rolling back some of the changes in response to some fan consternation. Some of the team that joined a discussion with our community on Reddit and things got to a pretty bad place. Some of our folks crossed a line with their comments and that's not how we want Respawn to be represented. So that's three lines. All good so far. He's basically describing what happened. His team joined a discussion on Reddit. And again, if you're a team member there, if you're representing Respawn, you're acknowledged as a Respawn developer, one of the things you should be trying to establish in that role is what are my goals in having this communication? Presumably, back of your mind is you want to represent the company well. You want to encourage people to use and purchase things in the product because it's a free-to-play game. And you don't necessarily want to get dragged into any of this over negativity. And if you're making a statement, if you find yourself making a statement that winds up swearing or calling names at the people that are on Reddit that are otherwise engaging with you on the Apex Legends Reddit thread, you probably want to take a step back. You want to do what we would used to say when we were only using paper mail and things like that is you want to maybe write that out. Sure, if that makes you feel better, but then you put it in the drawer. Then you delete it from the Reddit. You don't comment on that because you're not forwarding any of your goals by having that comment out there. You aren't improving the the chance of somebody buying the product. You aren't improving the relative uh, understanding of Respawn and goodwill towards Respawn. You are only trying to essentially satiate your own desire to get back at this guy that either uh, impinged on your name, called you a name, said bad things about your business model, your bosses, whoever it might be. And you have to think about what your goal is if you're going to make that communication. But so far, so good from Vince. He then says the first real and maybe only apology in this statement. I apologize to any of our fans that were offended. Now, that's all well and good. But you notice the structure of the sentence is not perfect. On the one hand, it's not exactly this, but it evokes the kind of concept of the fake apology which is, if you're familiar with this, if you've ever been forced by your parents to make an apology to a sibling, you're familiar with, well, I'm sorry you got so mad. I'm sorry you were offended. And that's not actually what this says. This doesn't say, I apologize that you were offended. It says, I apologize to our fans that were offended. So it's not quite the same messaging, but it tends to evoke the same kind of response. I read this the first time I actually had to read it twice because I thought he was really going for a full fake apology for a second there, which was just, hey, if this ruffled your feathers, I'm sorry your feathers got ruffled. To some extent, it does the same amount of work. And so you start to already get the feeling that they're in a defensive posture. This is then increased by the next sentence. I will always stand behind the team here at Respawn and support them on speaking out against some of the toxic and nasty comments being directed at them, including everything from death threats to comments aimed at their family and loved ones. This we might describe as hiding the ball or sleight of hand. Essentially, he's saying, hey, you know, sometimes our people get death threats or sometimes they have bad things said about their mama or their wives. uh, And I am totally against that. That's all well and good. That's something everybody can agree on. That's why you put it in a statement like this, but it tends to backfire in an apology statement in this context, because essentially, if you look at that Reddit thread, and I apologize for not putting it up in the channel, but I just wasn't comfortable putting that up in public. You can go find it if you are interested in the actual details here. There wasn't any of this toxicity. There wasn't any of these death threats. There were some potential kind of name callings in the way that is essentially the norm on the internet, uh, but not in hominem attacks of people's character uh, or things of that nature. So when he does this, when he says, I apologize if you were offended, 
or I apologize to those that were offended. And then I'll always stand behind my team when they're responding to folks that give death threats and comments that are aimed at their family and loved ones. That's not what happened here. And it winds up creating a whole kind of defensive posture when you read this statement. I'm not invested in this fight at all. I don't play Apex Legends. I looked at this from afar. I saw this apology go up and I immediately evaluated it as I do in a kind of crisis communication standpoint from a lawyerly perspective. And I looked at it and said, oh, that's a bad statement. And one of the reasons it's a bad statement is again, your goals. Your goal if you make this statement is to communicate your contrition and that you are apologizing for what happened. And in the middle of the statement, we're not even at the end yet, you basically signal to everyone that is disinclined to believe your apology that there's nothing worth believing here, that maybe you aren't so contrite, maybe you are very defensive about this, that maybe you don't think that anything was actually wrong, but you're being impressed upon to make a statement like this, either from electronic arts or just in general from your people that are saying something has to be said when something like this happens on Reddit. But it lacks sincerity now because you immediately jumped to, I'm defending my people. Now, he finishes up by trying to once again enhance the strength of his apology. He says, but we shouldn't contribute to it, toxicity, when we do comment and add to the very thing we want to prevent. We need to lead by example. Last week, we didn't do that. And going forward, we will be better. Having an open, healthy relationship with our community is incredibly important to all of us at Respawn. In other words, okay, if you didn't quite believe that, If you don't think we're quite contrite and maybe the apology is a little weak, at bare minimum, what we want to establish here is our mission statement, which is we shouldn't be adding to the relative level of toxicity in the world, regardless of everything else that I've said. And so we are going to try to do better about that. But again, that's a mission statement. That's not really an apology directed at those uh, that might otherwise have been offended by the way the developers treated them. And maybe that's justified. Maybe you're sitting here and saying, Rick, yeah, okay. I looked at that Reddit thread. I looked at those PC Gamer articles or anywhere else that this was reported on. And some of those Reddit people were being very aggressive in their stance on whether or not they were being over monetized, how they felt about Apex Legends and Respawn and Electronic Arts. And it's perfectly normal for somebody to want to respond to that. And I say, yeah, I understand that side of the equation. But then we have to look at this statement from the other side of the equation, which is, okay, if you have decided to apologize, you should make sure that you're apologizing. But if you've decided to apologize, you're already putting to the side essentially the feelings of those people that say you shouldn't have to apologize at all, that these people were toxic, they were bad to you. You shouldn't even have to apologize for what you did because it was perfectly normal. That is a reasonable position if you're on that side of the spectrum. But if you are on that side, then this does no work for you either. This essentially looks like an apology. So if it looks like an apology, you look at that and you say, hey, Respawn lost their higher ground on this because they wanted to apologize to the people that were offended. So when I said in this video and podcast that they found a third worse way between two bad options, that's what I meant. They essentially failed to apologize to the people that might be legitimately offended. And they also apologized enough that those the people that think that they shouldn't be apologizing at all are probably less likely to have goodwill towards Respawn because they had a statement like this in the first place. So this statement, while trying to find a middle ground, has actually done the opposite. And yes, found a middle ground going in completely the wrong direction and essentially managed to isolate and potentially further offend both sides of the coin here. And this is coming from someone who's regularly on social media, interacting in the video game space, on these forums, uh, on the internet in general. And I understand why you would be on either side of this equation. You can't have professional companies acting this way. You can't have uh, folks on Reddit just attacking people for relatively little reason on when we're talking about a free-to-play game. But... Even though that toxicity is bad, you can't just go out, if you're the CEO of a company like Vince, and come out with a statement that is this ill thought out for what you are trying to achieve. And I think even if you're giving a good faith, reasonable belief that he was trying to mollify the folks that were offended and read it while also kind of trying to half stand behind his people, he failed on both counts because he's essentially weak in apologizing and he's weak in defense. And so this is exactly the opposite of what you want to do. And that's virtual legality today. As I promised, this is a short one. Uh, And so we just wanted to talk about messaging. We wanted to talk about tone. These kinds of issues are coming up more and more and more as more video game developers and companies are dealing with people 
on Reddit, on social media, and everyone is really still figuring out the proper marketing techniques, the proper communication techniques. Certainly when a bunch of Respawn developers went in that Reddit thread to talk about the changes they were making, they weren't expecting to get into the equivalent of an internet fist fight. To some extent, my advice to these companies would be always, always expect that. And if it doesn't happen, it's gravy. But if you expect the fist fight, I think you can be a little bit better in control of your emotions and not responding to it, not feeding the trolls, as you might always hear on the internet in various corners, and come out with what you are trying to achieve, which is people feeling better about Respawn. But as a corporate lawyer, I will tell you, if you're an employee of a company and you're out there under the, the hat of the company, you've got a name, you've got a little mark that you're a Respawn developer or any other company's developer, you are representing that company. And some of what that company has as its assets are its goodwill. And if you negate some of that goodwill, you're going to be in trouble, whether that's at Respawn behind closed doors, whether you potentially lose your job for something like this. If you're that developer that's getting involved in those Reddit conversations, you want to be careful. And sometimes that's not fair because customers, even if they're always right from a market perspective, they're sure as heck not always right from a moral perspective or an ethical perspective. And sometimes biting your tongue is a really annoying thing that you have to do uh, if you're representing a corporation or other entity. And I understand that. But it is something that you have to do, and otherwise you wind up getting these kinds of mealy-mouthed statements from your CEO, potentially a future statement from Electronic Arts, uh, and looking at the company maybe more askance by a great deal of customers who look at this, see all these articles in the media, and say, ah, I'm not sure about Respawn. They seem to just attack people. Because ultimately, some of that is all that gets filtered out through people's understanding of the media. If you like this video, please like, please subscribe, please share it around with anybody that you might think interested. We talk about these things all the time. We just did a big blowout video on Insomniac being purchased by Sony yesterday. A number of things on Epic exclusivity, Ninja's situation on Mixer and, and involved with Twitch, and a great deal of other things. If you like this on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. If you watch this on a podcast, thank you so much for listening. Watch it on a podcast, listen to it on a podcast, whatever floats your boat. And I will catch you on the very next episode of Virtual Legality. <laughs>